Good afternoon, fellow ruminators. Welcome back to another session of Rumination with Andrew. Thank you so much for joining as we are about to discuss a very important topic of matter. And this morning, I opened the Gleaner, right? That's the Jamaica Gleaner. And I saw this report coming from the Gleaner. Let me open up again because it seems to me that I right. Okay, so we were here on the Gleaner's website. And there was an interesting article on the website, and it is titled, Screaming at Us, Bonus Vows to Crack Down on Fake News Online. And we have been hearing, particularly since the pandemic, the whole question, whole matter of fake news, as if we've never had fake news before. We know that our governments are often fake and they disseminate fake news a lot of the times. And but you know, in during the pandemic and post-pandemic, we have been hearing this about misinformation and misinformation and malinformation and fake news. And it seems to me that our governments, particularly in the Western world, are trying to copy systems, you know, systems of governance from foreign countries, particularly those um, with repressive governments. And we're hearing in recent times where they're telling us that we can't believe everything we hear, as if to suggest that we are children and they have to guide what we think. They have to filter what we hear or what we see or what we listen to. And it's not suggesting that governments cannot make speeches like these, but it's when they clamp down, when they begin to tell us that they are our fathers, as it were, or parents, and they have to monitor all that we hear, all that we see, all that we read, the information that comes into us. That is not the government's role. The government's role is to ensure that society, that members of society are protected, right? And that they are, you know, if somebody, presents information that is damning, right, that is libelous, then it is for that person, the person who's offended, right, to bring that matter to the law and for the law to run its course, right? That is how it is done and that is how it should be done, right? But the government cannot be, you know, all things to all people, right? Um, it seems to me that they also want to be the judge and the jury. Right, and we cannot allow our governments to take over that role to play that role because we know that our governments are not as innocent as they portray themselves to be. They're not right, so we have to be careful, we have to be mindful of what they're doing. Anyway, he says here, Prime Minister Andrew Bonus is warning of future prosecutions for trigger happy online warriors who continue to tarnish the reputations of Jamaicans, especially on popular social media platforms. While speaking on Saturday during our J Jamaican Labour Party Youth Conference held Saturday at the Almond Tree Restaurant in St. Anne, Bonus sent a warning to what he called the entire industry called fake news and those trying to trick people to get power. Right. And how many times politicians have tricked people to get votes. Right. They have been doing that since eternity. Right. Since we know ourselves to be societies. Right. Or governments have been tricking us. They are tricksters and there are more tricksters than what we see happening online. Yet they want to behave as if they are the examples of truth. Recently, I became aware of a situation where a young person made a post on social media that bordered on being defamatory, probably libelous. The person was tracked and their identity discovered. Long and short, the person was put up doing this by another political organization, and we have been tracking several such cases where you see some posts being made that border on defamatory or libelous. And when you dig behind, which we have the capabilities to do, and to discover the people behind these accounts, they are young persons being recruited to do this. So he's suggesting that they, the state has the power to track the people and what they say. And we know that they do have that power, but we are wondering if the governments of the world want to now expand their surveillance apparatus, right, and have us tracked everything we say where we go. We've got to be careful with what they're doing, right? They'll start out good. They'll start out by saying that they're doing it for the right motive, 
right? And then it transforms. It always transforms, right? I have never seen a situation of surveillance where it ended up well. It always ends up in persecution and government reach, something that you've got to understand, right? We tend to believe our governments too much and they are not trustworthy, right? We've got to understand that. Should respect them and should respect their power, but we ought not to believe everything they tell us. It is purely, this is now Mr. Hillness continues to speak, it is purely out of good conscience that many of them we don't pursue because they are young people, they are being misled, they are being used for the wrong purpose, they are being used because they are uh, native to social media. They're native, they're being used to manipulate social media to comment and post negative, to spread rumors about people, to do some really nasty things. He said, as he stressed the government's capabilities to track the unmoderated information which is being presented online. We have been tracking and you're going to see some action very shortly for those persons. Much of what is being done is in fact against the law, he said, right? So he's suggesting that much of what is being done is against the law. Well, the law should run its course, right? So often the law does not run its course because of political machinations and political maneuverings. And we see where the executive sometimes, or in most cases, particularly in Jamaica, controls the judiciary, right? And that is the problem. This is where corruption is at the heart of everything. Now, we have also in the Jamaica Observers, big news clamped down. PM says he will no longer be silent on the use of social media to spread misinformation. Um, Prime Minister Andrew Bolis has indicated that his government will be taking steps to begin clamping down on the proliferation of false information on social media platforms. According to Bonus, the widespread practice has caused a lot of confusion, even for some of the brightest people, right? So he lamented that the world has never had the capabilities as it does now to create and generate misinformation at a scale and speed that influences people who are rational and reasonable. And that is true to an extent, right? That we have people going on media platforms, social media platforms, and at the um, the tick, right, of the button, the touch of a button, right, then they're able to spread misinformation, about it, which damage a lot of times, you know, people's reputation, their hard-earned reputation, and once your reputation is destroyed, we know that it's very difficult to regain, to retrieve, as it were. But we're also living in a society in which we see that our governments have really been expanding on this surveillance apparatus and they really are tracking us everything that we do and we are not as free as we once were. They're also clamping down on truthful information that they describe as malinformation. So malinformation is information that is true but might be damaging to the government's reputation, right? So let us say, for example, that, you know, I'm not suggesting here that the government kills, but let us say that the government killed somebody and you unveiled that to the public, right? That is damaging to the government's identity, the government's, you know, image. So that is can be considered as mild information. Or let us say the United States that goes to war and what happened in the Gulf of Tonkin, right? During the dead of war that was unveiled to the American public. In today's world, that might not be permitted for journalists to unpack government overreach and government corruption because that is going to damage the government's image right and that is what we call malinformation so it's truthful information but it is something that may harm the government's agenda right and that is what the government is suggesting now do you want your society to be that way in which they're talking about malinformation it's truth truthful information about the government but it's information that can go against the government's agenda and can harm seriously the government's image, right? The image that they'd like to project to you, that they are trying to protect you, right? And they're trying to save you and trying not to um, impose any harm upon you. This is something that we have to be mindful of. Now, sometimes ago, I presented to you a video in which Barbados has 
implemented laws, you know, has laws and incidents now, the cybercrime bill that was presented in Barbados. And that is a serious bill in which you have to be careful of things that you say, right? And it means, therefore, that it's going to clamp down on anything that you can ever say because that is what they're doing. They're surveilling you. And if you say things and if it's offensive to someone, and sometimes it's not that it's something that you have said that is so you know um damaging of person's reputation it's just that the person might be offended right so let us say that we think that um oh i believe in keeping the sabbath and somebody you know finds it offensive that well i don't believe i believe in keeping sunday right and if the person is offended they can sue you and you can be problem right this is where we are going other societies are moving into that direction where whatever you say it could be a corrective measure it could be a corrective sentence right but what it means therefore the person is offended if the receiver is offended right just like we talk about malinformation the government is offended by truthful information that might not really look good for the government right might not shed a good light a positive light of the government so the government considers that as malinformation so you likewise, if somebody says something to correct to you, might be a corrective measure. And if you display that you are offended, then you can report that person, right? We're living in some very serious times and we're living in the biblical prophet, the, the biblical prophetic era, right? In which the Bible tells us that even your children, parents, you know, your brothers and sisters will betray you right, will betray you. And some of you are living with betrayers in your own homes and you don't know. And we have to right now wear up our minds because when the government begins to implement these laws, they are going to ask even your children, right? And we already have in some cases in the United States where children report on their parents, right? And they tell them, you know, who they're voting for, right? And if they are for the transgender agenda, right <laughs> or the, the woke agenda and all of that stuff right we have to be careful that we see that there is a growth there is an expansion of the government government surveillance program post the COVID-19 pandemic now you need to subscribe because right now you need to like the, the video because we don't know that YouTube will even move this video along because you know there are some words that they are not going to accept and that they're going to just put into the storehouse, right? And not send these videos out. Um, that is what happens that we're seeing that the more you speak out, the more your speech is suppressed. I'm understanding based on what sometimes people say, you know, and the responses that they give to me that people are not taking these videos seriously. You're not taking the question of surveillance. You're not taking the question of restrictions on liberties very seriously. You think that this is just something where the government is going after bad people. We're not bad people. We're innocent people. We're hardworking people. We're trying to do the best we can. We're trying to obey the government. But remember, you need to understand that, you know, the guillotine, a lot of people during the French Revolution were guillotined, even though they were pro the guillotine. If you understand what I mean, right? So here are people who were for the for the guilty, and afterwards they just did something that you know in which the authorities about them were not happy with, and they were also likewise guilty, right? So the fact that you think you're innocent and you're not speaking to this government and you're not with the public, the government is also watching you, and one of these days you are going to be presented with a challenge you yourself have to stand up to. And if you're not accustomed to standing up, then you are going to be weak. It's almost like if you're not exercising, you're not living a healthy lifestyle, then your body can't be strong. So don't be expect that your mental capacity, right? Your mental acuity is going to be strong. It's going to be formidable when that, if you are not practicing standing up for what is right now and being able to articulate explicitly your sentiments. I think that is not going to happen when you, a challenge 
is being made to you is being presented to you. You've got to understand that. So now is the time to stand up. Now is not the time to laugh and to look at somebody. Like, oh, yeah, let him talk. <laughs> he's speaking strangely. He doesn't even know what he's talking. Some of you think that I'm speaking in a foreign language, and perhaps I am speaking in a foreign language because you do not read and you are not aware of what is happening in the world, right? You are just accustomed to hearing this, you know, this familiar language that is not helping you to think, right? And you should look at a foreign language and see what it does to the brain because you're getting the same food, you're eating the same mental food every day and your minds are not being broadened, right? And your capacity to think is not being challenged, right? So how are we going to think, right? But we are seeing these things, whether it's the Mia Motley's or the Antipodeses or the Joseph Biden's of the world, we are seeing uh, a system in which um, our rights are being curtailed, right? And we're not here suggesting and repeated categorically that we should not try to protect our citizens who are the victims of the serious cyber attacks. But we see even um, where our governments, they do things that harm us, right? History is replete, right? Is with, with all of these, you know, instances or examples of manners in which governments have harmed their own population, right? So we cannot really sit by and think that we're talking about righteous people, Right, that our leaders are righteous and that they are the exemplars of morality. We cannot accept that coming from them. And those of you who are reading enough, and if you're reading the Bible, you understand that one day we are going to be surveilled. The entire world, the Bible says, is going to wander after the beast. And you and I will have to make a decision there once you are alive. Right, you will have to make a decision on whose side you are. And it doesn't come that at the last minute you're going to just stand up and say, I'm on the Lord's side, I'm not going to accept the mark of the beast. First of all, you have to understand what is the mark of the beast. Right? What does it entail? You've got to understand truth. Right? The disciples during their time when Christ was trying to let them know what truth was, that he was going to die, right? They couldn't understand what he was saying. They just couldn't fathom the information that Christ was conveying to them. And what happened to them? They were deceived, right? And we had, of course, Judas who betrayed him. We had Peter who denied him. And most of the other disciples, they what? They left him all by himself, all by himself. They ran away because they were not accustomed, right? They didn't understand the truth that Christ conveyed that he would have been um, murdered and would have been resurrected on the third day. They could not conceptualize it, right? And many of us are not conceptualizing and trying to understand what is going to be the mark of the beast, right? And this is the most solemn message that has ever been given to man, right? Because all the surveillance that we're seeing that we're seeing right now, the surveillance apparatus that we're seeing involved, that they have on the books, laws which they already have on the books, are going to be implemented during that time. We're not very far away from the, the, um, the imposition of the mark of the beast, right? We are not very far from that. And those of you who saw what happened four years ago, I shall not call it, right, because we're really being suppressed or information is being suppressed here. But, right, we, God showed us just as just an insight, just a minute picture he gave us because it's going to be a thousand times worse than what happened four years ago. A thousand times worse, right? And you need to be aware of what is happening and they're not, you need to understand that if you're not, if you're not tethered right now to the truth, and if you're not trying to seek the truth, and if you have, especially if you have the truth before you, but refuse to 
adhere to it, refuse to listen to it, right, then God cannot help you. You've got to really try to understand what is truth, right? Pilate asked Christ, what is truth? Even though truth was right before him, he could not see it. And he knew that Christ, there was something special about Christ. He knew, he was convinced. I mean, his very wife told him that don't have anything to do with that righteous man. Because I've had a dream, I got a dream, and that man is, 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 is the supernatural. Something about him, don't have anything to do with him. But Pilate, loving his power, right? And he did not want to be fired, right? And did not want to be perhaps executed by the Roman power, right? <laughs> then he decided that he would um, go along with a rabble, with a mob, right? With these criminals who wanted the blood of Christ, right? So we've got to be careful because people with whom we're laughing right now, and with whom we're sharing information, with whom we're living, right? People who are all very families will one day, based on these laws, these laws of surveillance, betray us. Your very son, your daughter, your wife, your husband, right? Your students, your teachers, your pastors, your elders will one day betray you. And that is something very hard to think about, right? When we look at the story of Judas and the fact that Christ was saying to Judas, you are going to betray me. The man that dips his hand in the, the bucket, right, is going to betray me. And, and that's what happened, you know. <laughs> the moment Christ said it, that's exactly what Judas did, right? That's what Judas did. And Judas, because he had been so keen on doing what his heart, his evil heart wanted him to do, he did not take stock. He could have at that time say, Lord, I am sorry. I should not be doing that. I should not have done that. I plead your pardon. But that was not what he really wanted to do. Right? Because he was bent on working with the state, with the religious leaders who were working with the state, right? To have Jesus do what he wanted to do. Right? And notice that even in the days of Christ, that is what the Jews said, that it is what? It is better to what? It's more expedient, as they say, to have, to, to have Christ die than to have the entire nation, right? Than they, to have the entire nation be damned, right? Be destroyed. So they were also doing that. They were destroying Christ, the, 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 the logic of the counselors, the Jewish counselors, the Jewish leaders, is that they had to destroy Christ so that they could protect the Jewish nation. That's what they that's what their thought was. So the governments are now telling us that they will have to destroy these fake news and destroy the persons who are, you know, disseminating fake news so that they can protect you and be careful of that. Haven't we seen many instances in which the government has said that they're trying to protect us. And instead of doing that, it the system gets worse. We become even more unsafe, right? So we've got to understand that we cannot give our governments that amount of power, that level of power, because in Jamaica's context, you know, in the first place, they're not even protecting the ordinary citizens, right? They're not protecting them. Every day people are dying right, left, and center. Right? They're just dying, and the government has not presented a credible, workable, pragmatic crime bill or crime plan that will help to reduce significantly the high crime rate that is so pervasive, that is so ubiquitous in the land of Marcus Masai Garvey. Right? Has not done that, but is ready to tell us that he's going to protect us from social media and it's uh, it's fake news, the dissemination of fake news. That is what the Prime Minister is telling us, right? But he's not prepared to present a credible pl um, crime plan, right? He's not. 
He doesn't have a, a clue. In fact, Jamaica is already, as I've suggested to you, a criminal state. So crime pays, right? Do you remember that adverti um, advertisement? Crime pays, pays to kill. It pays to murder people. So why would you want to even put a dent on it when that is what is who the state is? The state is a criminal state. Right? And it's time for us to understand these very important matters. It is time for us to really grasp these very important issues. Right? But we don't want to grasp them because they're too hard to think about, right? They're too strange to even. Thing. Because, you know, to, to, to reflect on, because when you think about the fact that your parents who birthed you, might the people who might betray you, the children that you've had, that you've taken care of, that you have really wept over, right, shed tears for, provided for, right, that they will one day betray you, it's something that nobody would really want to even grasp. Your mind cannot grasp it, and I understand, because you're really wondering, how could that individual be so ungrateful? But remember, we said that the human heart, above all things, is what? Is wicked. Is desperately, the Bible says, desperately. Not only wicked, it's desperately wicked and evil. And then the Bible, the author went on to say, who can know it? Right? We don't even understand our very hearts, the hearts we have here, that we think we know, that we think we understand. And there are people who will, for the life of me, they will say, oh, this person will never do that. We can never say somebody will never do it. Right? Peter was very, very strident. He was very sure of himself when he told Christ, I will never deny you. Right? And Christ said, you are going to do that. You are going to deny it, right? If Peter were humble, he should have said, Lord, please help me, Lord. I hope that I will not deny you. And please, God, grant me the strength that I will never deny you. But he says, no, I will fight for you until death, right? And at that time, as Christ had told him, he denied his Lord, right? Because Humans cannot be trusted. It's only where the power of God and the power of the Holy Spirit, you know, controls our minds and our hearts that we can be trusted. But so many of us have not fully yielded our will and our power to the Holy Spirit. So we are just who we are, right? On the exterior, we seem to be wonderful people and like the government it seems that the government is desirous of protecting its citizens but are they are they desirous of protecting their citizens and when we look at the history and when we look at some of the organizations with which the governments are affiliated right and their agendas these organizations agendas including the united nations and the world economic forum Right? And the WHO and the best goals are. Right? When you look carefully at these agendas, you really have to wonder. And there are lots of people around the world who think that these are just organizations that just have some things on paper. Right? And their members are just trying to, their members are trying to feel important. Right? And they haven't got a clue. They haven't got a clue of what these organizations are about to do, right? And remember now that the prince of this world is not your government. It's really the devil, right? And that's why the Bible says that his kingdom is not of this world because God and the devil cannot rule in the same domain. They cannot rule the same kingdom, right? And that's why he has to destroy. The devil will have to be destroyed at the day that God has appointed Right, but he's the one, the devil is the one who is behind one, he's the one who is behind the people who are disseminating false information and fake news, right? Because the devil is fake, he is there's no truth in him, 
the Bible says he is the father of lights. Right? He's the father. He's the one who created untruthful information. First, he did about God. And God had to what? To thrust him, as it were, out of heaven. Right? The Bible said that he saw Lucifer like lightning descending from heaven. Right? Because he didn't understand that God is a God of love, but he's also a God of justice. And justice will have to be dispensed whenever God sees that it's time for it to be dispensed. Right? And we are living in a society in which people are just thinking that our society somehow by nature just acquired freedoms. And that, you know, our governments were always trying to protect us and we're just free because we're Americans or we're Jamaicans or we're Trinidadians or we're Ghanese or we're Barbados, right? And we're just free by nature. Nature has given us that freedom. But is that true? I think it was very well expressed in the American Declaration of Independence, right? That it is, we get our rights from our creator. Right, not from the government. It's not the government that um, you know that gives rights to us. It is God. That is where the rights come from. And once the government begins to take it away from you, you will never get it back. You know why the government is taking it away from you? Because we are a godly, evil, and wicked set of people, and that is why it's taking. God is using them as His weapon, as His sword, that He's using the state, right? Because the sword of God, which is the word of God, should transform lives, right? But when that sword does not transform our lives, which many people have thrown away the Bible and think the Bible is some, you know, some simple book. It's a book for those people with, who are simple-minded, right? Who are not intellectuals, who are not scholarly, right? That is what the, the, the Bible, those are the people who read the Bible, right? And then when you speak like that, then if God cannot use his sword, the word of God, to transform your hearts and your minds, right? Then he will have to use the sword of the state. And I can tell you, the sword of the state is a very evil sword. Now, the devil uses it, but God allows him to use it because he is the prince of this world. But God would have shielded us from the power of the state had we acknowledged him. But we have decided that we're going to move and we're going to worship the state instead of worshiping God. And when you worship the state, you're worshiping the devil. And the devil is what? There's no good in him. So he's going to eventually destroy you. Right? And this is what the government is doing at the moment, trying to destroy our lives and there is no way of getting away from it but heeding the word of God and believing by faith what God has told us. Believing by faith what God has told us. And which person in his or her right mind cannot say, cannot simply but accept that the word of God is true because we see a prophetic manifestation of the word of God right now as we speak. We're seeing where governments are now coming together and they're joining their powers together, right? To control, to restrict our freedoms, the freedoms that people fought for, but they fought for it in the name of God. But we, as a generation right now, we have moved away from the principles of those Protestants who fought and who adhered to the word of God. We now, we don't even know the word of God in our generation. We're wicked people. And we're seeing now where wicked and evil political laws are going to be implemented to persecute us. Right? May God have mercy upon our society because it looks very innocent. All of these things come very innocent. At the end of the day, they are going to affect you 
and your children and your grandchildren and you and I. But for the mercy of God, right, are going to be enslaved to our societies. Thank you so much for joining. I hope that you like, share, and you will subscribe. And it's now time for you to increase on the level of subscription so that we can reach a broader audience, right? It's time for us now to go to the world and to become viral so that God's word and his message can be sent to the world at large. It's not about me. It's about our world sinking into the morass of evil. Have a great day. See you then. All the best.